three, two, one. Welcome to Bellwether episode 120. It's Mental Health Awareness Month. So let's talk about mental health. It's been a topic of mine a bunch. If you've listened to the, the podcast in the past, if you've heard the TED Talk, if you heard any of those things, you know mental health is one of my core components of, of how to remain relevant, I guess I could say, in, in the new economy. And so um, it's an important month. I think it's an important thing to to prioritize and it's an important thing to discuss and it's an important time to remind. And I love the fact that it happens in May because the weather's beautiful and you get outside, at least here in the Northeast, and you go outside and you kind of want to be healthy. You want to be well. You want to do all of these things. And particularly right now, there is a need for, for significant mental health work amongst all of us. Now, I will not say what you're supposed to do because everybody's very quick (laughs) to tell you how to be mentally well everybody's got their opinions on how you should operate on the things that you can do all these solutions without the context of what makes you so spectacular and wonderful and so i'm not going to go into that today i will however uh talk to you about some of my particular challenges I will talk about the framework that I use to kind of get myself out of these ruts and to make sure that I'm maintaining some kind of mental wellness and and continually discuss and converse with myself in this kind of crazy way, but it's fun. Um, But I definitely want to touch on it because it is so important because the struggle is real for uh, many, many people, especially my clients. uh, Corporations are trying to do what they can, or at least the people in corporations are trying to do what they can to help their people at work. Uh, But at the end of the day, we're all responsible for for the bed that we lie in and so um i will kick that off by saying we have a responsibility to ourselves to be mentally well and this is not you know we know it we hear it and it's not an easy thing to do especially with the world changing and workplace changing and all this noise coming in from social media and this noise coming in from the news and this noise coming in from everywhere else where anxiety is just piling up and piling up and piling up um so it's incredibly difficult for us to focus on it when so many other things are going on. Now, when we think about life in general, and I tell this to to corporate when we're doing workshops and everything else, we are what we prioritize. And we can only prioritize so many things. Like at work, if you wanna prioritize mental health, then how is that kicking off every meeting? with a discussion about mental health, whatever it is, right? You don't have to have a full discussion, but you know, what are you doing to be well this week? And what are you doing to be well this week? And what challenges are you working on? And um, there are ways to do that in an appropriate kind of work appropriate way, but we have to do that for ourselves. Now, it doesn't mean, you know, when we say we are what we prioritize with the result of our decisions, with the result of the work we do ourselves, um, it doesn't mean it's all or nothing. Right. And a lot of times we hear, you know, I work in a toxic workplace. So for my mental health, I'm leaving. It's not this all or nothing component. And oftentimes when we think about what's driving our negative mental health, we're so focused externally at blaming other things. We're not focused on the decisions that we're making and the opportunities we're not taking to get ourselves to where it is that we need to go. Um, We are the result of our decisions, of our internal, it's called an internal dialogue. What's the conversation you're having inside of your head based on what do you need? What do you need in this particular moment? And, you know, the framework I laid out in the TED Talk, the physical, the mental, the social areas of preparation for change, it's the same, and you could also argue a financial one, um, it's the same with with our overall health in terms of not just preparing for change, but in terms of how are we living our lives? You know, from a physical standpoint, are you doing what you need to do? Because that impacts your mental health. From a social standpoint, who are the people you're surrounding yourself? That impacts your mental health. It's this kind of nice little web grid, um, however you want to call it, right? Something, it's a system. We'll call it a framework. We'll call it whatever it is that we want. But from a mental health standpoint, from a mental health focus, uh, there are three categories that I like to put in. One is the self-love aspect. Two is the self-care aspect and three is the belief system and these are my three as i was figuring out a long time ago what my mental health needed and and you know i i did podcasts on this back during the pandemic um how i quit drinking and and how that benefited my mental health and how i needed to quit drinking in order to do that um how the iron man helped me go into a dark place and pull myself out of it um and going through these exercises of what what system do you need bespoke to you 
you have to fill in these gaps, right? Self-love on what you think about yourself. Nobody can tell you what to think about yourself. And it's a challenge to do this because we know all of our dark secrets. We know the, the, the fears and the failures and the opportunities we didn't take and the mistakes we made and the relationships we broke. And, um, and that's a painful, difficult conversation to have. Um, but it's also a good conversation to have so that you can embrace who you actually are. And the, the Rousseau quote I give everywhere, I've probably said it a hundred times on this podcast, that he wrote in a letter to his friend, how can one be satisfied with anything in life if they're not satisfied with the one person that they can never be separated from? And that's you. And we've got this happiness challenge. We've got a satisfaction challenge. We've got, you know, am I making right choices challenge? And you always make right choices, right? It's based on the context that you have and you're making the best decisions that you can in the moment. And when we're comfortable with ourselves and loving ourselves and recognizing that we do have value, and articulating that value to ourselves. We don't have to shout it from rooftops. So be, being comfortable with who we are as an individual is one fundamental step. And that takes work. It's not easy, right? Because we all have, you know, I've got dark demons. You don't even want to know my demons. But it, And it took me a long time to get through that. And it took me, you know, a lot of um, thought and challenging myself. And, you know, just because it happened in the past doesn't mean it has to happen in the future. And, and you can change your perception of yourself over time, but you have to get this dialogue going with yourself. From there, once you know who you are and you're comfortable in embracing the fact that you have imperfections, everybody's got them, then we move into the self-care, which again is bespoke to you. What do you need? What do you need in any particular moment to help you with your self-love, to help you with whatever uh, anxiety is being thrown your way, whatever macro change is happening in the world or financial challenges we have or um, stress from the kids or stress from work, whatever it is, right? The stress is coming in from everywhere. Stress is our biggest challenge. What's the care that you need? Is it, do you need to meditate? Meditate. Do you need to go for a walk? Walk. Do you need uh, some time in the woods? Go spend a week in the woods. What, like, whatever it is for you, you know what gives you a really good charge. You know what regenerates you in a really meaningful way. And again, it goes back to the prioritization. How do you prioritize that? Also not easy, right? We have obligations. We have family. We have work. We have all of these types of things. It doesn't mean that you have to leave all of it behind and go out to the desert and meditate for a week. But there are little ways that we can do that um, where we can really focus on what it is that we need. How do we use that to, to embrace ourselves and, and get ourselves back on the right path? It's also not a quick fix. Doesn't some, it's not something that just happens, you know, once you do, oh, I'll meditate for five minutes and everything's good. Uh, but generally what it is in terms of self-care is it, it balances out that stress to say, you know what, I just need a 30 minute recharge or I need a two hour recharge or whatever it is. Um, that's what we all need on a very regular basis, like almost daily. What is it that you need to kind of recharge? And um, if it doesn't happen daily, it should happen multiple times a week. And then finally, you've got your belief system is what do you believe? This allows us to love ourselves. It allows us to be open to the fact that we might be wrong. It allows us to recognize that we don't have to be right all the time. That a lot of the stress and anxiety I deal with um, with clients or help them deal with is this desire to be right all the time and correct people and defend these ideas that they don't necessarily actually believe. And it's a, that's just a form of anxiety that nobody really talks about. And so when you recognize that a belief system is just beliefs and you understand the questions you can ask to say, you know what, maybe I don't actually believe this. Or if I do believe it and you believe something different, that's okay. So having a dynamic belief system in place, which also is an ongoing malleable thing that takes constant work. These are fun discussion frameworks that we can go through and challenge ourselves every day. We could pick a little tiny thing and learn about ourselves to allow us to really take responsibility and control of, of what it is and, and what we want to do. So this has to be bespoke to us. Okay, this is your framework, self-love, self-care, belief system. And in order to have these really, really good internal conversations, it helps to surround ourselves with uh, people who can help. It helps to surround us with uh, people who have different ideas than you, right? There's a, there's a lot of talk about male mental health in the workplace, um, which is good because men just don't like to talk about it. Uh, I don't like that we're telling everyone that they have to talk about it, right? Everyone's got an opinion on what you need to do for your mental health. Uh, but I will say to the guys, 
um, sometimes it helps to have a female perspective or a different ethnicity or whatever this, you know, whatever this different kind of view is to recognize that it's not all on your shoulders, right? And, and people are dealing, everybody's dealing with some shit. Everybody's dealing with difficult things. And when we understand that, it takes the pressure off a little bit, right? We only have this short period of time on the planet. We only, you know, each day is 24 hours in a day. There's only so much you could do. You know, there's a cathartic exercise to say, what am I actually responsible for? And what am I holding on to that I don't have to really hold on to? Um, mental health comes in so many different buckets. There's, you know, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, and all of that. That's a mental health challenge. There's the insecurity, the anxiety. There is the stress from work, the stress from, um, uh, from change. Just, you know, what's AI going to do? And, and we question ourselves as human beings and what our value is. And when we can anchor ourselves in order to find value, in order to articulate value to ourselves, um, we have to take ownership of ourselves and our response mechanisms. And we have to say, and I mentioned this in, in the TED talk, many of us don't go from adolescence to adulthood. We don't make that transition. And it's very difficult to do it because everything is done for us today. But the difference, a therapist told me this once, the difference between adolescence and adulthood is in adolescence, people do things for you. Adulthood is when you take responsibility for your actions. And many of us, we don't have to make that transition. And that's damaging to us. And it, it's this, it, it drives addition, it's this unseen kind of anxiety to, to, where we feel like we're not in control. And it's because we're not actually taking responsibility for who we are as a human being and the choices we're making and the decisions we're making and all that. Um, now I've had my problems. This was eye-opening for me, right? Where it's, you know what, we talk about all of this stuff, but we don't actually take action. And I actually had to take action. And I finally said, you know what, I'm going to stop drinking and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And when we do things every day or every week or every month, we make these decisions to say, this is what I need to do. It's not about saying I can't do anything else, but you do it within the context of the world that you have around you. And those are the decisions that we have to do. So mental health, um, means so many things to so many different people and there's no one single solution to solving it but it's that dynamic discussion with ourselves on what you need the decisions you're making um everything in life is a choice everything is is a choice waking up and going to work in the morning is technically a choice waking up next to your spouse every morning is technically a choice um being a parent to your kids is technically a choice, right? You can abdicate these responsibilities, whether you like it. I mean, it's not a nice thing to do, <laughs> um, but ultimately it's a choice. And, you know, I choose to be a father every day. I choose to be married to Gabby every day. I choose to do this work every day because I know it's good for me. And how do you go through, you know, what is it that's giving you some particular challenge right now? For me, going back to the parenting thing, my house is a mess. I've got two kids. I love being organized. My house is a shit show right now and it drives me nuts. I can't walk throughout my house without stepping on a toy or something like that. It drives me bananas. My decisions, right, are, all right, what do I have to get cleaned up in order to kind of clear my workspace and all those other types of things so I can focus and I can do whatever it is that I need. It could be anything, right? But we have to be hardcore reflective on what it is that we need in a particular moment so that we're then able to make the decisions that we have to make so that we can progress and make the decisions and take the actions that we actually have to take. This is something um, that is a forever exercise for you. Um, and I love the Oscar Wilde quote, quote, the aim of life is self-development because we've forgotten the greatest responsibility, which is a responsibility to ourselves. And that is it. That is ultimately what life is about. We have a choice, we have a decision, and we have a set amount of time where we can enjoy each moment. You know, I was talking to someone well, this is almost like my dating kind of analogy is you go on a first date and then you decide if you want to go on a second date with that person. And if the second date goes well, you decide if you want to go on a third date with that person. You decide if you want to go on a fourth date with that person. You go to work each day, your first day, you're like, all right, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go back and I'm going to go back. If at any point you don't want to go on a fifth date with that person, you end the relationship. That's it. And you make the changes that you have to make. It's the same with anything else that you're working on is, you know, how do you enjoy your particular moment. How do you enjoy the family? How do you enjoy the work? How do you do Those are decisions that you have to, to work on. And it's not easy. It's difficult because other people make it difficult. 
All right. I'm more far more introverted than I am extroverted. So I will tell you going into a group of people generally makes things worse <laughs> than better. But sometimes it could give you a real charge if you know how to enjoy the people around you in the moment that you're in and what you're doing. And, and that's a challenge that you have to. How do you enjoy this next hour of your day? What's and we do things we don't want to do because we have to do them. Right. We have obligations. How do you enjoy it and how do you figure that out? So mental health is um, it's big and it's I, I think it's a, a great time in May to reflect on what it is that you're working on and, and your particular challenges. And um, and as always, I'm going to be here for you. If, if there is anything you want to talk about, even just for someone to listen to you vent, uh, the amount of people who call me every day just to vent. Um, it's why I can't get any of my work done, but it's um, but I know it's meaningful and I know it's helpful and it's 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 very, very good. And so find your people to help you with this. Um, but you're ultimately the person who's got to make those types of decisions. So good luck with it. I'm here to help. Um, I've got resources on the website. There's all kinds of stuff that you could do and, and just kind of reflect and, and go through those those types of exercises. So um, as always, reach out if there's anything I can do to be helpful for you. Enjoy your month. Enjoy the month of May and enjoy being mentally well and enjoy the fun. I mean, it's, it's super fun to go through. What I tell people at the beginning of a coaching engagement, it's super fun because you get to work on yourself. And what's cooler than working on, on yourself and, and making you the center of attention for yourself? Because you are the most important thing to yourself. And that's good. And so do it. Take care of it. Love yourself. Do good things. I am here if you need me. I will talk to everybody soon. And next week, we're going to talk about time. We're going to go through the time exercise. Do you know 30 years is only 360 months? It's not a lot of time. Um, it flies. Just 360 months. And if you were to kind of anchor that out, I'm a planner. Uh, we're going to go through that kind of fun time exercise, and we'll talk about that next week. So uh, I look forward to chatting everybody soon, and thanks for your time. Chat soon.